I'd do Emil, my trusted friend. We've known each other since we were nine or ten. Together we climbed hills and trees, learned of love and ABCs, skinned our hearts and skinned our knees. I'd do Emil, it's hard to die. Rod McEwen was to poetry what cheeseburgers are to haute cuisine. Widely mocked and extremely popular. The reason I brought it is because he signed it back in 1969. And I was hoping maybe I could get another signature. Thank you very much and uh, welcome uh, to another evening of shock and awe. <laughs> You're shocked to find I'm still alive. And under your breath, you say, oh. <laughs> I have been rolling. I've walked along. Hiked a hundred highways. Never found a home. Still and all, I'm happy. The reason is, you see, once in a while, along the way, love's been good to me. He was also a singer and songwriter who wrote songs for Barbra Streisand, Perry Como, Dusty Springfield, and Frank Sinatra and translated the works of Jacques Brel and brought them to America. Rod McEwen began to publish books of poetry in the 1960s, Listen to the War, Lonesome Cities, a score of others. But, but listen, uh, what was the story then? It used to be a bookstore? It used to be a bookstore, and I was the first author ever to sell a million books from this one store. He sold more than a million books in 1968 alone and recorded his poems, too including my friend, the sea. Do you know my friend, the sea? He watches everything we do. You, rolling over in your beach bank sleep. If we have ourselves to know, we should get to know the sea. Well, um, Rod approached me, really. Um, the sea was his idea. And I thought it was a tremendous idea, so naturally I was very anxious to work with him on it. And also because I admire him very much as a lyricist. And I think I'm gonna love you for a long, long time. Then if you go Come and gone Doesn't anybody Know my name Goodbye to you My trusted friend We've known each other Since we were nine or ten In me you see A man alone Held by the habit of being on his own. Sinatra, gosh, Sinatra, from the time I met him in about 1965 to his death, he was one of my really close friends. I have been a rover. I have walked alone. Hiked a hundred highways. Him recording a whole album of my songs. Never found a home. First time he'd ever done it of, of any. And uh, it was magic to work with. And uh, he loved songwriters. The and uh, is you see. it really put me on the map. Once in a while, along the way, 
Love has been good to me. There was God, a girl maybe I'll find something good here. No. In Denver. Here's a here's a film score for a western called Scandalous John. Uh, here's Prime Miss Jean Brody. Uh, for that you were nominated, eh? For nominated. Yeah, I was. Jean, Jean, the roses are red. All the leaves have gone green. And the clouds are so low, you can touch them and so come out to the meadow, Jean. I recorded over 200 LPs and a lot of, a lot of CDs. Oh, I like making records. I've written 70 books. Uh, I guess maybe over 2,000 songs, 20 or 30 film or television scores. So uh, I've translated a lot of songs, adapted a lot of songs. I'll catch the sun. I'll never give it back again. I'll catch the sun and keep it for my own. I don't think that somebody should have a have to have a 12 foot bookshelf to understand a poem I've written. I think poetry or music or any of the arts, painting, film, should be accessible. And any writer who tells you he's writing just for himself. Less hard if you have a life partner? Um, well, I'm not sure. I think there are those people who are meant to have life partners and they and they do ease the road for them. The closest thing I have to a life partner is my brother, who I rely on tremendously. I mean, uh, and we rely on each other a lot. And it's a good relationship. It's tough like any relationship, uh, but uh, I'm a loner, basically. And, and always uh, been. Yeah, and I, I like, you know, and people get, people get solitude and loneliness mixed up. They're so far apart from each other. Uh, you have to earn solitude. Uh, if you're lonely, you're usually feeling sorry for yourself. It's one of my favorite places on the whole property. Well, he was always a wanderer. He was always, you know, where he one time he, he disappeared and he was working on uh, Bing Crosby's property. All of his work as a flat. Just the farmhand. He was always off doing something. Uh, but usually one of us knew where he was. One of us knew where he was. But, uh, He's always been a loner. He's always been a loner. Always been a loner. Uh, and he's still alone. I mean, he loves, like this, he loves getting off like that. I've walked alone, hiked a hundred highways, never found a home. Still and all, I'm happy. Oh, look at that book. Ancient. Well, Want to see something even more ancient? Go ahead. <laughs> Whoa! Look at that drawing I did. Now, you want to know something else? I had been married two years, and I had found my love, my true love. You've been my true love ever since. Oh, aren't you not? I'll be married 42 oh, years I'm not kidding. Year. Yeah, but I'm not kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's always the way. No, Thank you, Anne. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Ah, oh, this is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, God. 
gosh. I love it. You know, I'm not so sure that I've done what I want to do yet. I, I don't really know what that is. No. I do know that time seems to be getting shorter and shorter, and uh, I don't want to go anyplace. In fact, I want my tombstone to read, uh, he was unavailable. He retired from performing live in 1981, suffering from depression, but he got better and began to give an annual birthday concert in New York. Once in a while, a long way, love's been good. I've finally gotten old enough to hit that note. Good to me. Rod McEwen died at the age of 81 of pneumonia. 